Educational Communications and this station present Environmental Directions with Nancy Perlman. On this series, we explore the effects of human influence on the Earth's ecosystems and discuss solutions to environmental problems which affect the quality of life on this planet. Environmental Directions gives you the kind of information you need to help you participate in decisions impacting your community, the nation, and the world. Now, here's your host, Nancy Perlman. Hello. We are going to be talking about using humor to inspire people to improve the environment and also about using recycled material in art, especially collages, with my guest, Esther Perlman. And while we have the same last name, we are not related. Esther is an independent artist, writer, and speaker. She is a program director for the Pacific Palisades Art Association and is an author of over 10 books and a playwright right as well. She has won numerous awards, including the Irwin Award, Most Innovative Campaign for the Children's Question Book, three art awards from competitions in three different galleries. She is a member of the Book Publicists of Southern California, of Women Painters West, and Collage Artists of America. Her solo one-woman show is called Reinventing Me, and her latest book is Looking at the Bright Side, mostly. Welcome. It's pleasure to have you with us. Thank you. I'm looking forward to talking with you. You have recently been very involved in finding recycled materials and creating artwork. It is quite beautiful, and I encourage people to look at it. Could you describe some of the items that you have created in your collages? With your environment, and I'm always thinking of that because I collect so much stuff. I have a townhouse that has five recycled bins in it, and then you throw your rest of the stuff stuff that's not recyclable in another section next door, next to it. Although the other day, because the garbage man didn't come, I couldn't put my recycled things in that bin. But lots of times I go through the boxes, and I love boxes. Everybody's getting all these boxes, and they're all different sizes, and they're interesting. So I collect a lot of the boxes, and then I have had an art show where this was before the environment problem became such an enormous situation. I stuck boxes and placed paper with art on each section of the boxes and then displayed it in an art show called People Downtown. This was before Street People was popular, so this was like five years ago. So they put it in the center of the room for the art show. And also I used the boxes for holding things. Instead of buying plastic boxes, which actually look very nice too, you can actually to paint the boxes or collage them and then create holders for all of your extra things that you have in your house. Like you, I look at what people supposedly throw away or put in the recycle bin or out on the curb and repurpose it and reuse it. And you certainly have done that. Well, the one that I really liked that I framed was taking leftover paper and putting little plastic paper squares for stick on to remind you something. And then and placing that on the leftover paper and then throwing paint on it. And I created this very large piece of art, which was very successful that I even framed it because I thought it was so good. You do enjoy saving materials and reusing them to the point where you've had to hide some of that material from your husband. He sort of wants you to not keep them around? Yes. Since I collect all these little interesting boxes from the recycle bin in my townhouse, I have hidden them on top of the dryer, and I have this cover over the washer and dryer. It's like little panels that folds. The only thing is, the television's right next to the washer machine and dryer, and then he could see those boxes. Because I was trying to only open it when he wasn't around, but then I needed to wash the clothes. So then he saw the boxes on top of the dryer, and he said, what's this? It's very difficult because I do collect a lot of recyclable things that are helpful for my art. My neighbor, Bob, he lets me use some of his cabinets. You need the space. While you have focused your attention on other areas, art, writing, you were even formerly an actress in movies and TV, you do believe that one has to live a more ecological lifestyle. And I always encourage people to really 
become activists by testifying at hearings, writing letters to elected officials. But you do the simple things. You take your books and give them away at the library, your old clothes and take them to the different thrift stores and decided that reused clothing is just as good as new clothing. You have done what you can to try and make your own personal lifestyle healthier by not dyeing your hair, by eating better, by watching your diet. Could you explain how you have adjusted your lifestyle to the point that you've even changed the food for your pets? I had this dog, Maggie, for 13 years. I was taken to the vet, and, and the dog was sick all the time. And I was buying the dog food that was selling. And after I learned about health, and I heard the special dog food that was supposed to be healthier and had no preservatives, then I started giving that my dog that food, and then I didn't have to go to the vet so often. In addition to trying to live a healthy lifestyle, you also believe that people should have humor in their lives. How do you see humor as inspiring people to make changes in their own personal lifestyle, to be more sustainable and ecological? And how does humor help the environment? Because quite frankly, I've tried to gather cartoons and jokes about the environment, and it's so serious with species extinction, pollution, climate change, overpopulation, it's hard to make jokes about it. Well, I do watch these old TV shows. It does make me feel better. And then I try not to watch the news because it is upsetting. And then it's terrifying. That's what's going on in the world. And by just changing changing the station on the TV and watching something humorous, it does make me feel better and I feel better to the environment. We certainly have to watch the news to know what is going <laughs> on. I wish only though that the mainstream news would cover some of the ecological crisis in a better way and let us know what some of the problems are. Fortunately, I'm on many, many email lists and mailing lists and I get information from different organizations that talk about some of the problems of ecosystem destruction and wildlife that the major network news does not. So it's a mixed blessing in terms of having news that we need to watch and news that is not so great to watch. Yes, sometimes can help people because with the holiday heavy rains, they were telling people not to go on certain freeways. It's so important to get out of the house and enjoy nature. It's so important to communicate with others and to work with others. You have written the book, Looking at the Bright Side Mostly. This was something you did really pre-pandemic. It came out in 2020. Could you tell us what some of these stories are about? I have my older son. He wrote five poems, and my other son and I wrote a couple poems. And then I wrote about my 80th birthday party. I talked about my new wig that I got, and everybody got a kick out of that. Oh, Although my son-in-law, he says, uh, every time somebody gives you a hug, your wig moves to the side. And then also buying the wig, too. I'm, I'm not dyeing my hair, and I'm saying more healthier by not putting all those chemicals on my scalp. You have indicated some of the interesting experiences in your life. Could you tell us some of the kinds of stories that you have shared in your book, Looking at the Bright Side, mostly? One of the things, like I wrote about going on this block that had these beautiful trees on it, and I never saw that block. And then I was noticing where were the roots on this tree. And some of them were on the cement next to the street. And there were big bunches of roots there. And I've been interested in that because I have trees in my townhouse. And they're causing a lot of leaks in my townhouse because the roots are going underneath the building. So I was talking to the gardener and he was telling me some of them were 300 years old trees. So he said that they changed the way the roots were going so that it wouldn't go toward the house. This is such an important story where we need trees, we want trees, and yet sometimes trees and the human buildings and sidewalks and roads are not in sync with each other, and yet we have to find that balance with nature and have nature because we definitely need it in our lives. You wrote a solo one-woman play, Reinventing Me. 
what did you reinvent? What is it about? Well, my different challenges is lifestyle. I had been a dancing teacher, and then I had also, I was extra in the movies for four years, and then I've been an artist, been doing art, and then I was trying to be a comedian, and I'm a mother, I'm a grandmother, and so I keep plugging. You have certainly had a most interesting life, and I was pleased to be able to learn more about it, and your artwork is beautiful. It's radio. It's hard to describe it, but what is one of your most earthy pieces, your collage that shows the environment? Well, I took one of these long boxes and then I put different kinds of paper and then I sprayed it with different kinds of inks and it's really quite pretty. It's 40 inches long and then about 30 inches wide. I guess it's hard to do representational art of different animals and plants when you do collages. I did a lot of paintings of flowers and abstracts. I was doing watercolor, so I have all these different styles. And then I had a studio. I had 20 years of art in that studio, so I got about 150 pieces of art. Since you want to live more ecologically, some things are easy for you to do. Use recycled material in your collages and not have toxic chemicals on your body or in your foods. Are there some actions that you find more difficult or easier to do? Well, I have to stop this collecting all these boxes because <laughs> it's too many boxes. I love to collect them. And it's like a bad habit. I always become creative. Too big of a habit to create this. Creative souls love to collect and share. You have done a lot of art. If people want to see some of the pictures of your work, they can go to your website. Yes, estherperlman.com. And that is spelled E-S-T-H-E-R-P-E-A-R. L-M-A-N. As I mentioned at the beginning of the show, while we have the same last name, we aren't related, but it's been a delight to talk to another Perlman, and I want to thank you so very much for your work in using recycled material to try and get humor back in our lives. Thank you so very much for being my guest. Thank you, Nancy. You've been a delight. It was a pleasure talking to you. Thank you. I have been speaking with Esther Perlman, who is an artist writer, speaker, author, and playwright. I'm Nancy Perlman. Thank you very much for joining us, and do tune in again next week. If you would like free information about these environmental issues, go to www.ecoprojects.org or call 310-559-9160. Environmental Directions with your host, Nancy Perlman, is a community affairs program of the nonprofit organization Educational Communications and this station.